everyone and welcome to Etymology Today with Janae. I'm Janae and now for the etymology. <laughs> so I was at the beach about a week or so ago and saw some sailboats go by and it made me think about how much I love sailing and being on boats. And I started thinking, well, you know what, this would be a great way to do a show. I'll talk about all the different words and phrases that come to us from sailing and from ships. And so I wrote a few down and then I realized, oh wait, I've got way more than one episode, so maybe I'll do two episodes. And I kept writing and then I realized I had three episodes and I kept writing and I thought, okay, I need to back this up. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is some of my favorite words and phrases that come to us from sailing. This is by no means a comprehensive list. There are a lot, a lot. If you think about it, humankind has been on boats for a really, really long time. And for a really, really long time, they were sailboats, the wind was what got us from place to place. So it only stands to reason that a lot of that has kind of worked its way into our vernacular. So let's talk about the keel. The keel is really the, the backbone of a ship. It is the lowermost central line weighted section of the hull. <laughs> now, if the keel is in the air, you're in trouble. You've keeled over. But if everything's going right and it's exactly where it should be, you're going on an even keel. Now, if you are say on an even keel, but there's no wind. Well, there's no wind, so you're just kind of riding out the tide, floating along until the wind comes back. You're being tied over. So if you ever thought you're going to grab a snack or something to tide you over, it has nothing to do with food. It's all about the wind, not filling your sails. Now, if someone is aloof, then you might think that they're emotionally distant, maybe even physically distant, but aloof literally, again, comes from sailing. It means to um, sail into the wind to avoid the shore or perhaps a hazard. So you are steering away from something. You are aloofing. You're being aloof. If you are taken aback by something, that could mean that the wind has blown your sails back so that the sails are actually back against the mast. And Again, you're taking it back, something that comes from our, to us from sailing as well. If you're learning your new role as a sailor, you may be a little overwhelmed because there are quite literally miles of rigging, miles of ropes that are on a sailboat. And so you'd have an experienced sailor show you the ropes. And you would definitely want to be shown the ropes because uh, if not, then you are definitely going to be in trouble. <laughs> so as you're learning all of those ropes, uh, what you might need to know uh, as well is not just how they work and what to, to use them about, but how to secure them. You need to make sure you tie up all your loose ends. Now, when you are moving them around, you want to make sure that you're going in a smooth, continuous movement. You're going to be going hand over fist. So if you've ever heard of someone giving you money hand over fist, it's that, you know, constant, continuous, swift movement. So hand over fist comes from that. On a ship, you may have noticed that there are these little posts kind of all around uh, the edge. They're called the bits and they are posts for securing an anchoring line. And so once you have put the line all the way around, you have reached the bitter end. You could also say you're at the end of your rope. Are, is your mind blown yet? Because mine is. <laughs> There's so many things that come to us from sailing. But even moving on to that, a lot of the, uh, or several rather, of the ropes are actually known as sheets. And if a sheet is not secured, then it could flap in the wind. And on a standard three-sheet sailboat, if all three of the sheets are loose, then the boat is going to kind of waddle along in the water and it's going to kind of go all over the place and look like that the ship itself is drunk. So if you've ever heard of someone being three sheets to the wind, it comes from those sheets not being secured. And you can be one sheet to the wind, two sheets to the wind, but if all three she three sheets are to the wind, then you are very drunk indeed, my friends. <laughs> you are wallowing along like a drunken sailboat. When ships would come in, they would be flying their jibs. A jib is the country's flag and it would be very unique and colorful and would let everyone know kind of who was coming. And you could make an impression of someone or of those people approaching on the ship by the cut of their jib. So you could say, oh, I like the cut of their jib. Let's go take a look at those guys. At least they're not three shapes of the wind, right? <laughs> um, if you're a pirate, I would imagine maybe some people besides pirates have used this, but I would think primarily pirates. Sometimes you may need to make a quick exit. So what you would do is you would take your swords, you would take something sharp, and you would cut the anchor rope so you could catch the wind and get out of there. You would cut and run. 
if you're looking around on the top of the ship above board, you can see everything, everything that's on that top level. So if it's above board, it's clear, it's obvious, you can see everything that's going on. Now, if you're on a military ship, you may have one of these newfangled long guns. Now, the guns would shoot very far, but they weren't tremendously accurate. I mean, you could hit what you were aiming at, but it was a long shot, right? <laughs> I feel very cheesy with the finger guns. So the finger guns, long shot, it works. Just roll with me on this one. <laughs> now, sometimes things go overboard. If it is intended to go overboard, then we took a word from floats and that word is flotsam. If something, uh, or pardon me, I've got it backwards. So if something is flotsam, if it is floating, is something that unintentionally went overboard. If something intentionally went overboard, it has been jettisoned or jetsam. So if you've heard of flotsam and jetsam, you know it's odds and ends, but it's things that are floating along or that have been jettisoned overboard. It's all in the water, just a matter of how it got there. <laughs> now, right around the equator, there is a band of water that is extremely calm and it was very common and easy for sailors to get mired down in there. There's no wind, they can't get out, and they just float along in this calm area with no escape. And that area is known as the doldrums. So if you've ever heard of someone being down in the doldrums, it's kind of a euphemism for depression or being kind of stuck in one place. And that's literally what the doldrums are. It is an actual physical location. <laughs> so maybe not one that you want to go to unless you have a motor now, though. <laughs> and now let's talk about what sometimes happens at sea. And that is that someone has passed along. If that person was an officer or a captain, what they would do to show to kind of honor that person now that they have passed is they would put up blue flags and paint a blue band around the hull of the ship. So if you've ever heard of someone feeling blue, thinking that that's feeling sad, it, that is a naval tradition as well. So that those blue flags flying or the blue band painted around the hull, feeling blue. And talking about naval traditions, uh, members of the British Royal Navy, which I feel like are my good friends now because I've learned so much about them. I'm talking about rum. If you saw my history in a class uh, episode about rum, we talked about the British Royal Navy. Now the British Royal Navy, when they had to do their morning inspections, they'd have to come out barefoot and put their, uh, put their toes right along the seam of one of the planks. They had to toe the line. When they were getting ready for bed, the bosun who would have a little whistle would play a tune. He would be piping down the hammock. So if anyone's ever told you to pipe down, that comes from the bosun piping down the hammocks until I never knew it was time to go to sleep. Which for those of you who are sound and music fans, Captain Von Trapp, remember, was a naval captain and that's where he got the idea for the whistle because it was what he was used to. It was what was used on the ships. It wasn't just kind of a random thing. That was literally what was used. It was what he did. <laughs> and one of the very last ones is between the devil and the deep blue sea. Now the devil is an actual thing. It is the um, seam between the deck planking and the top plank of the deck of the ship. Now that section really needs to be watertight. And so it had to be caulked an awful lot. And it was a very difficult thing to get to. And it was very annoying, I'm sure. But a sailor would either have to stand on the very edge of the deck or actually be suspended over the side. And so he would literally be between the devil and the deep blue sea while he was doing that. And again, this is just a small, small list. There are so many more. So if you think about it, there are an awful lot of sayings that we've gotten from sailing, from ships, from the naval tradition. Uh, here are just a few. And there are many more. If you think of any more that I haven't mentioned or that I didn't just put up on the screen, make sure you mention them in the comments. And if you haven't seen my history in a glass about uh, the history of rum, go ahead and check it out for a little bit more information about the British Royal Navy as well as a really good rum-based drink. <laughs> but I hope everyone has had a great time. Thank you so much and aye aye.